while I would never join a club, they'd accept someone like me as a member. And for the most part, that's the logic that follows me from place to place, and wherever I go. I will make an exception for you folks. I appreciate the criticism, believe it or not, and the ability to consume this content at an increasing volume regardless of its quality. I have attempted to provide just that, quantity irrespective of quality, and I plan to try to improve, at least in the quality aspect, if not quantity. You'll need to be patient for just a bit longer, and in the meantime, ignore my wit, or at the very least, my interpretation of Sigmund's concept of it. To wit, but not that wit, an entirely separate wit of which I speak, I hope you will let me know how you feel about these ideas. If you enjoy them, and even take the time to like, subscribe, or join the Patreon group, and help me keep this thing rolling, uphill, Sisyphus style, at least until it gets easier, and I doubt that'll happen. So I'll make the best of it. As they say, if you take the half-truth to be true, and I'm paraphrasing here, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. With my work holding, and if you'd like to criticize it, feel free, I will admit it doesn't provide a crazy amount of strength. And if you're milling in a way that requires that much holding force, I have a few criticisms of my own. Anyway, I digress. Things get more complicated on the second side of this body. It was really straightforward milling the top, as the features are less dynamic. And if you want to review my opinions, they are like assholes, you know, everyone has one. I mean about slot mailing, not people's behavior as compared to the rectum. This video goes into extreme detail. There are two locations on the top where a substantial amount of material was removed. My work holding, masking tape and CA glue, works quite well, but has a breaking point. If you don't support these areas, vibration will likely loosen the part from the bed and the spindle will do its best to chuck it, or whatever's left of it, across the room. And if it doesn't, I might. I've designed some 3D printed milling supports that will hopefully prevent this disaster and make indexing slightly easier. This is the point that I tend to lose most people. I have carefully set the origin of each of these operations at the same point, be it on the other side of the stock but the X and Y are identical. I use the center line of the stock for the first operation and transfer it to the sides to make it easier to align the material. The milling supports also provide some alignment as well. With the center line of the part lined up with the center line of the machine, I can index the Y from this line. And use the furthest out part of the body on the x-axis for the second datum. I index the bit from the spoil board and then MDI Z to the height of the part, which is two inches in this case. I like to keep a technical drawing of these dimensions handy as a mistake here would have some severe repercussions. With the origin set, the program loaded, it's time to run the code. With most builds, I only have the opportunity to optimize the code a little bit. I set up what I think works, I simulate the code to identify issues, and I live with the results. There are two distinct aspects of this work. Virtual optimization, real-world optimization. Okay, let's uh, make that three. Um, as I was doing this, I noticed another one, so this is the future me adding that one in. Let's do it. Virtual optimization is just that. 
simulation, and adapting virtually. And there are limits. Some things can only be found while running the code and cutting. I'll talk about one of them I encountered in just a bit. I was happy to have room for optimization on this build, and I'll take this opportunity to walk you through my process. When I'm milling at the machine, I like to have a notebook close at hand to keep track of things I notice and things I want to improve. Like when the milling is too heavy or there's too much air cutting. I only have a little room to make changes, but this one's comfortable compared to my usual builds. I want all the optimization done in the first two or three of these. There are nine altogether, and four are birch ply, so I'm aiming to get this done with the first two. I like to post-process the sections quite conservatively for this process. I separate the operations into groups that make sense and limit the continuous runtime, giving myself time to clean things up and make changes and adjustments. In the first operation, the control cavity, I was air cutting and I needed to reset the top height for the second cavity operation. The adaptive milling process needs a lot of adjustment. I cut the milling time down on this operation by more than six minutes. And at the same time, I got into some areas that needed to remove more material. I noticed that with the 3 8 long end mill I was using on the scallop operation, when the cutting was heavy, it created a lot of vibration and risked loosening the work holding. For this section, I improved the previous adaptive strategy and reduced the amount of removed material. Along the edges, the angle is quite steep, so I modified the code to leave these areas for another operation, and that allowed me to change the tool to a 3 quarter inch ball nose, which can take a bigger step over, have less vibrations, with less stick out, and cut at a faster speed. I added a ramp operation to finish the profile transition to the edges. This strategy is like the scallop, but allows me to use climb milling and limit the amount of material engaged, making this long tool much more effective. Finally, the control cavity ran in two passes, one at full speed and the second reduced. I changed them both to run at 75 inches per minute, and the results were perfect. I have a new issue. These things keep popping up occasionally. For the most part, my machine runs very well, but we can make it run just a little bit better. I'm not out making a cup of coffee while my machine's running. I'm always paying attention. Well, most of the time. Understanding why the machine is doing what it's doing and what to do to fix it can make your parts come out a lot better. During the adaptive milling, a Z drop happened very quickly and it caused the machine to lose a bit of Z height. Not much, just about 30 thousandths. It was near the end of the adaptive operation and would cause the final cut to run just a bit deeper than it should. I recovered this dimension by indexing the z-axis 30 thousandths lower on the remaining operations, but I didn't want to have to keep doing this. I first tried modifying the plunge speed in Fusion 360, and that really didn't change anything. I realized this move should be a rapid, and Fusion 360 doesn't control the machine's rapid speeds. They are set in the machine configuration itself. I modified my Z-Rapids, and well, let's see if it worked. It's going to cost me a few seconds in extended programs with a lot of Z-moves, and I usually try to avoid them anyways, but I can spare a second or two. As luck would have it, that didn't work either. I like the change, so I'll keep it for now, and I'll get back into Fusion and look for another reason why this is happening. Okay, I think I've got it now. I was partially correct when I modified the machine configuration. And if I'm right... In the linking tab, I have the retraction policy set to high feed rate mode. And this sets the feed rate on this move to the cutting feed rate. I changed it to preserve axial and radial movement. And now the simulation shows these moves as rapids. And the Z plunge should run at our machine configuration setting. And yes, we got it. I don't like the idea of cranking out a lot of parts in a day. That concept is counterproductive in the end. I prefer to take small bites systematically and keep my equipment in good condition rather than running it into the ground. While working out the details of this cam, I found an issue with one of my ways, and if I hadn't taken the time to resolve it, I could have made many more failed operations. I like to take the time needed to clean up the machine well and ensure 
I can get through every operation successfully. While it does take some time, in the end, it saves me more than it costs. Well, these came out really well. My failure rate was low, and the code optimization made the parts come out better and save a lot of time and stress. I no longer feel Sisyphus's boulder pressing on me. Maybe I'm at the top of the hill, or maybe it's just a little momentum break, and the pressure will return. Oh, I forgot the control cavity covers. It's pretty easy. What I like to do is just lay them out, give them a bit of your favorite wood seasoning. In this case, I'm using celery salt, but you could use almost anything here. Pepper or pepper 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 is also a good choice. Give them a good wang jangle, turn off the lights, and in the morning, there they are. I guess I should have tried that with the stock from the beginning. Maybe next time. Until then, do me a favor, like, subscribe, or even join the Patreon and contribute a buck or two to keep this thing going. You'll get access to a bunch of my Fusion 360 files and get some more details about how I do the CAD and CAM on these projects. Without you, well, I'd still be making videos, but nobody'd be watching. So yeah, and uh, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>